Big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. The highly customizable and professional website builder to manage your online shop and host your online portfolio. All in one place and all on your terms. Hello and welcome back to the channel. The last couple weeks have been spent scrambling and preparing for my final shop update of the year. Yes, we're finally here. And I want to take you along the journey of me making a couple hundred stickers or so and stocking up for my launch. By the time this video is coming out, the stickers are actually available on my shop, but not for much longer. So make sure to check out my shop, link down in the description for Halloween stickers, fall stickers, maybe even some FNAF themed stickers. And thank you to everyone who has bought stickers so far, either this launch or previous launches. I really appreciate your order and I hope it gets to you soon. Back in September, after how big of a response and order load I received for my fall launch, I knew it was finally time to invest in a machine to cut my stickers and save my poor hands from cutting hundreds of stickers. In my how to make stickers video from a couple weeks ago, I was mainly showing how I cut stickers with a pair of scissors super easily from home. And now I wanna show my experience and a bit of a tutorial and review of using the Silhouette Portrait 3 for my most recent shop launch and and how it has basically transformed the way I run my sticker shop. This video is not sponsored at all by Silhouette, but it is sponsored by Squarespace, but more about them later. I'm using the Silhouette Portrait 3, which I bought on Amazon back in late September, I believe, and it was around 160 USD at the time after sales tax. When I first received this machine, it literally only took me about an hour to set up through the guided setup from the Silhouette website, along with watching some YouTube tutorials to make sure I was doing everything correctly and not breaking the machine. I will have them linked down below, but basically going to the Silhouette website takes you step by step in setting up the actual machine and then requires you to input your machine serial number to receive access to the actual Silhouette software called Silhouette Studio. And this software sets your documents and stickers up to print and cut. Now this machine only cuts, it doesn't print. I have my own printer that I've been using for my sticker designs, but you can print directly through the software to get the correct registration marks for cutting later. The software is very similar to Photoshop in my opinion, with the select tools and shape tools, so it's not much of a hurdle getting around the interface, so if you're used to a lot of design software like InDesign, the Adobe Suite, or just general like photo editing software, it should be easy to get used to. But if you're not used to a lot of that software, there there's so many tutorials online taking you through the software if you're unsure about how to do something or how to set up your document to print and cut and all that fun stuff. So. Moving on, I'm just gonna go through a quick tutorial on how I set up my sticker designs to print and be cut by the Silhouette Portrait 3. It's honestly not that complicated once you get a hang of it. I think the hardest part is just setting up your document, but once you have all those, uh, once you have all your documents set up, it's it becomes a breeze, just like printing stickers and cutting them and putting them on the mat and all, all that fun stuff. Okay. So first, I make sure I have a clear 300 dpi PNG file of the sticker design I want to print. I usually work on sticker designs on like a 2000 pixel by 2000 pixel uh, 300 dpi canvas, either in Procreate or in Clip Studio Paint. So I don't miss any quality errors when I print. So working at like a large size makes it so much easier to size it down and not lose the quality. I also don't typically add a pre-made border to the sticker. I know some people already put in that pre-made like white border, but sometimes it can be really helpful to make borders around your sticker in Photoshop, especially if it's like a more detailed or line-based sticker so you can get a better idea of how the final sticker will look. You can do this like really easy in Photoshop or any image editing software by selecting your designs and expanding the selection to your desired width as shown on screen. This can be done in Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint, any program that has this select function. And I think another useful tip is to do some color correction and print tests of the design before taking it into the Silhouette Studio. This can be done through Photoshop or like I said, through any photo editing software. I usually print the designs at a smaller level and just run the same sticker paper sheet through my printer over and over again until I get the colors I want. This will give you like a better idea of how your final stickers will print through the software. 
Okay, so now that you have your PNG file, your sticker design, select the file option in the Silhouette Design Studio, which is in the upper left hand corner. Then select open and choose your PNG sticker file. You should then have a new document with your design. Make sure to take note if you get a caution symbol, which is also in the upper left hand side. If this appears, your design may end up at a lower quality when you print. I learned this the hard way. I'll show an example of some stickers on screen. Uh, they're, they're probably a discount sticker listing on my shop now, but make sure to reduce the size and make sure that pop-up isn't showing when you're about to print. So you can easily fix this by resizing your sticker to a smaller size or going back to the original file. That's why it's so important to work at the larger size and the, the higher quality, the 300 DPI, so that you can just size it down and get it to the sticker size that you want. So make sure that caution sign isn't popping up. Another reminder is I've made this mistake as well where I forget to set up the registration marks and printed a whole sheet of stickers that couldn't be cut by the machine. Um, those will also be a bunch for the discount sticker listing so make sure to go to the page setup option which should be on the right hand vertical tool toolbar at the very top. Click the registration marks option and select that you want them on. This will give you the marks you need to set up a successful cutting format for your sticker designs. This is crucial, like your machine needs to be able to read the registration marks to be able to actually cut the stickers. So if you don't learn anything from this video, make sure to learn that you need the registration marks. So. Furthermore, in the same tab, you can customize your page setup even more. If you're like me and using a, an 11 inch by eight and a half inch sticker paper, this is my setup for the document. Feel free to take a screenshot of this to save for later. You can also set up a grid to help you visualize the size of your sticker a bit better. I have mine set to every one division, so every square is about an inch and helps me visualize how big the sticker will be. So now that you have your designs and your registration markings set up, make sure you have those registration markings, you can start formatting the stickers to the size and orientation that you want. So select your design with your cursor and format it to the size that you want. And then before you start duplicating the sticker and filling up the page, recommend to set up your cutting lines first. So open the offset panel and make sure to select your sticker design. You can then select the offset option and experiment with the border border widths as much as you want. Make sure there are not any holes or gaps in the selection. Um, you can easily delete points or add points if there are any holes. Once you have an outline that you like, make sure to select both the sticker design and the outline. Do Control C, Control V on your keyboard or right click and select duplicate to create additional stickers on your sheet. So arrange them so that none of the outlines are intersecting with the other sticker outlines or the registration borders so that the machine can read everything clearly when it goes to cut. I find that when printing medium sized stickers, I often get a lot of empty gaps, which can be a great area for smaller stickers to utilize as much as the sticker paper as possible. The registration marks kind of limit you to a certain area on the paper but finding these workarounds to save as much sticker paper as you can is really ideal to getting the most bang for your buck with the with the with using the silhouette to cut. But before we move on to the final couple of steps, you're gonna need a place to sell all these beautiful stickers and host an online shop. So I'd like to introduce the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace has so many clean and customizable templates to choose from to get started with if you're feeling lost with where to set up your sticker shop. It's also extremely easy to set up print on demand and merchandise extensions if you're looking to start off small with selling your products. They handle all the inventory, shipping, and fulfillment processes, and all you have to do is worry about making the art. I plan on moving my shop to Squarespace in the next couple of months, and I really look forward to becoming more organized with revenue for my business with their sales tax extension, as well as streamline a lot more of my shop organization with their optimized and easy to set up product listings. And I can even list both my physical and digital product listings on their site and even host my own future online course. So if you wanna jumpstart your 2024 goals of opening your own online shop, compiling a professional portfolio, or building your online art career, check out squarespace.com slash sketches of Shay to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using my code sketches of Shay. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. And thank Thank you for continuing to watch my videos and giving me the opportunity to get more sponsors like this to support my content and art. Now, 
back to cutting stickers. Okay, once you have everything where you want it to be, double check that nothing's intersecting or crossing and make sure you don't have that caution symbol and also make sure that you have your registration mark set up. You can print right through the software by selecting the print icon in the upper left. So check your printing preferences that you have everything set up correctly. I chose the matte paper option since I'm printing on matte sticker paper as well as as well as selecting a high quality print setting. Make sure your preferences are correct with your page setup, especially the page orientation and just like that you can send it off to print. And I feel like the hardest part is over now. So Make sure to save your document as a silhouette document just in case something happens and the software closes so that you won't lose your cutting setup after printing and have to start all over. Because if you lose that original file, then your the page that you just printed is basically useless for cutting because it's not going to be calibrated to that page. So make sure to save that document. After it prints, do not move any of your designs on screen. You want it to match what you just printed so you can get accurate lines and borders cut for your stickers. So yeah, don't mess with anything. Everything's set in stone after printing and yeah. Now that you have your sheet printed, if you like to laminate your stickers like I do, now is the time to let that printed page dry up for a bit, depending on what your sticker paper recommends. For my paper, it's about five minutes and then you can laminate your sheet. I typically do this with plastic or a silicone bench scraper. I showed this in my sticker making video. I just lay the laminate sticky side up on a clean desk and then slowly place the sticker sheet on top and work out any air bubbles. Now that your sheet is laminated, I trim off the excess and then place it onto my then place it onto my silhouette cutting mat, lining it up to the eight and a half by 11 inch mark on the mat and pressing it down and making sure that it's sticking all the way to the mat. And make sure to line it up as best as possible so you can get the most accurate cut. Okay, once that's finished, you can now load your sticker sheet into the machine. So make sure that the machine is on and connected to your computer first so that I can load the mat. Once this is set up, line up the mat to the line shown on your screen. Now, this is like a really important part with making sure everything is lined up. So I messed this up the first time I used the machine, but I don't want you to. So you don't want to line up the mat beside the notch or the line, whatever you want to call it. You want to line it up on top of that notch. A load of a difference when making sure everything is aligned with the machine. The stickers I made, the strawberry ones that I made earlier, they were set up against the line, not on it, and it completely threw off the calibration. So don't be like me, learn from my mistakes. And I think I even like messed it up again recently with a with a newer sticker design. So I still struggle with it sometimes and just really make sure it's lined up on top of that line and hasn't shifted. Line it up on top of the line and then press the up arrows so that the machine can load the mat into the like registration and make it ready to cut. Okay, now it's time to go back into the Silhouette Design software and make the proper adjustments and changes to make sure your paper is ready to be cut. So select the send tab and you will now see like a thicker line for your stickers. But you may also notice that there's now a inner red line. So you want to click on that inner line and select no cut on the side to remove the line so that the inner sticker is not cut. If you don't get rid of that line, then it's going to, it'll double cut your sticker and you won't have like a white border. So you'll have to do this for all of the designs that you have on your page to ensure that only the outer line is the line that's going to be cut. So moving on on screen is my preferences for my laminated sticker paper. Make sure to screenshot if you're also planning on cutting laminated stickers. I find that this setup works the best for me. Slightly increasing the force if you need it, if you find that the blade isn't cutting all the way through, or if your blade is getting dull. Shout out to the channel The Nova Moon for their video how to make stickers at home, the Silhouette Portrait 3 tutorial. That video tutorial really helped me a lot and they their video really helped me a lot with figuring out these uh figuring out these adjust adjustments for my paper so once you have all this set up you can now finally send your project to be cut so you, you click the send button and once it's sent the machine will start cutting the stickers be warned it is kind of loud not kind of loud it is very loud so don't so don't be startled if the machine sounds like a screaming analog horror monster i'll add an insert of how it sounds here fair warning it sounds a little scary so here it is 
after all the stickers I've been cutting lately, usually like some music or like a pair of headphones, it, it doesn't really bother me too much anymore, but make sure you're not running it at night or during quiet hours to prevent angering a roommate or a sibling. A couple minutes later and the sheet should be done. So do not force it out of the machine, like don't pull it out of the machine, just press the down arrow button and it should release the mat on its own. And now for the satisfying part. So, so you should take like a corner of the sticker paper and gently remove the excess sticker paper from the sheet. I find that if you have a really new mat, it tends to be very sticky. Um, I struggle with this towards the beginning, so it's harder to remove and it leaves behind some of like the extra sticker paper, but the more I use the mat, I find it's a lot easier to remove because that stickiness sort of goes down. So once you have just the stickers left on the mat, gently peel them off. You really want to take your time with this part, especially if your mat is super sticky. So you don't want to risk tearing your stickers. So just gently peel it off. And now you have your finished stickers. So sometimes they can be a bit tacky coming off of the mat, but this can be fixed by letting them be exposed to air and sort of dry that stickiness a little bit before storing them away. I hope this tutorial helps anyone looking to get started. I am definitely still a beginner and always looking for better setups for myself so I will also link the videos I use to figure things out like Nova Moon's video. If you need more information regarding things like sticker sheets or different paper styles but yeah this is what works for me and I've enjoyed the process a lot. So what are my, my final thoughts about using this machine? I've been using it for a couple weeks. I've probably put in like 50 sheets of stickers to this machine already. Does it actually speed up the process or is it more trouble than it's worth? So first of all, for someone who's using a cutting slash craft machine for the first time, it was really easy to learn how to use, especially with the amount of tutorials and wealth of knowledge on YouTube. I do find that if you've had prior experience with any sort of design software, it's really simple to get used to. But if it's your first time using any sort of software like this, there are so, so many tutorials like this video on YouTube and there's a whole community of people who use these machines and not even just for stickers, but for a ton of different projects. So. Once again, I'll link a bunch of the videos that helped me and inspired me with my own silhouette journey down below. I haven't encountered any sort of hardware or software issues yet, or even calibration issue issues yet that, well, that weren't my own fault. So the machine does get a little warm when being used for a long period of time. When I was batch making stickers the other day, I would constantly have something cutting for a couple hours and I could feel it getting a little warm on the back, but so far there, there haven't been any issues while using it. And I think, I think it'd be great to do a follow-up video of some sort sometime next year to see how well the machine is holding up. But so far, none of the hardware has broken off or I, I haven't had any malfunctions with the actual physical machine. I typically have to print around 100 stickers at least for my sticker member tier every month. So I will definitely be using it frequently for the next couple of months and really putting it to the test. So let me know if you guys would be interested in a updated review. Now, for the reason I actually bought this machine, the amount of time that it saves me. This machine can cut more stickers per minute at a better quality than I ever could. That's just a fact, it, it can do that. It's such a great time saver and allows me to produce more stickers in a smaller amount of time, which is awesome for shop prep this time around. I like overestimated how long it would take me to make all these stickers and I literally made them like all in a weekend. The longest part is just setting up the documents, but once that's good to go and you have a couple printed and laminated, it feels like such a breeze to just peel off stickers like every five minutes. And it saves me so many hand cramps from cutting stickers, which feels really great for my hands when I have to do other tasks like drawing or even typing. This in turn increases my hourly wage as a shop owner. So, and to be able to price my stickers higher because of the better quality, I'm able to increase my monthly revenue while allocating more time that I would be that would be spent cutting stickers for other active income streams like commissions or working with sponsors. The time saving aspect was pretty much my main motive for buying this machine and it definitely has already paid off and it it feels so nice to not be stuck for like a couple hours just cutting stickers. I could just let the machine do that while I can work on some other things. 
In addition, the added quality and consistent cut of the sticker makes the stickers look so much more clean and professional looking and really satisfying as a creator to be able to offer to be able to offer my artwork and designs in a higher quality. It also allows me to think about charging more and continue to scale my small business as I mentioned before. There is a slight negative when using the silhouette and that is that I'm unable to print print as many stickers per sheet due to the registration borders and cutting dimensions of the machine. This is also cause for increasing the price since it's slightly more expensive to create the stickers than being able to hand cut and fit more stickers on a page. Now, I'm not trying to bump up my prices to the extreme, but I want to consistently value my art and products featuring my art and a slight percentage increase is a normal part of growing your shop and business. I'd recommend always pricing your work accordingly and compare your quality to other creators to make sure you're not underselling your work. So keep in mind the time it takes to create the art, complexity of the art, the quality of the sticker, price of the sticker paper, price of your ink, laminates, and any other tools and materials you use to make your sticker, as well as the time it takes to create the sticker. These are all these are all the costs you need to keep in mind when choosing a price. I've been selling my stickers as hand cut quality since I opened my shop in May, so it's going to be really great to be, a, be able to send out higher quality products to customers and just feel better about having a more a higher quality product. Do I recommend this machine for cutting stickers? Absolutely, but only if you're making or planning to make closer to hundreds of stickers at a time. If you're just opening your shop, I would really recommend starting off just hand cutting and seeing if you actually like managing a shop first. It takes a lot of work and organization and patience with yourself to learn everything and I feel like investing the least amount of money and trying things out with what you have first before per bigger purchases is the best way to go. In my past sticker making video, I showed the complete process of how I make stickers without the silhouette. So if you need some guidance with that, check out that video. But if you're ready to take your shop seriously, increase the quality of your stickers and looking to save a ton of time with production, the Silhouette Portrait 3 is a great option to try out. The software is similar to other design software, so it may come more easily to folks familiar with Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint. But if you're new to design software, it may take a little bit of a learning curve. It may be a little overwhelming at first. I haven't had any issues with calibration Vibrations or the cut being off. The only things that were slightly frustrating in the beginning was the, the highly sticky cutting mat that caused me to take more time to peel things off, but after a couple uses, the stickiness lessened and peeling paper and stickers off was a lot easier. One con is the sound of the machine being quite loud, as I mentioned before, and it can be a bit of an ear sore when working with it, so if you're really sensitive to noise and scratching sounds, I would definitely recommend finding something else or maybe investing in a good pair of earplugs or some deafening headphones. And like I mentioned, you do waste a little bit more sticker paper due to the registration of the paper and the machine's inability to cut all the way up to the edge of the paper, but it's definitely a better option than crickets. I've seen some crickets, I don't know if all of them do this, but some of you leave you with a huge gap at the bottom of the paper that they won't cut stickers on, so I think with the silhouette you ultimately end up getting more stickers per page in the long run. Actually, let's talk about that a little bit. Why did I choose a silhouette over a Cricut? When I was first considering buying a cutting machine for my stickers, I asked a lot of fellow shop artists and friends what they used to cut their stickers with, and most of them recommended the silhouette for stickers. Many of them found that crickets were a pain to set up and calibrate and maintain calibration and also leaves that huge gap at the bottom that I was talking about. While the silhouette is pretty much good to go as soon as you set it up, when I, I haven't found any calibration issues or shifting. I've cut a lot of sticker sheets in preparations for my shop update and probably more by the time this video is coming out and I haven't had any calibration issues so it's been really easy to work with over time. I really want to continue to use this machine for the rest of the year and future sticker designs in 2024. But one thing I really want to do is to try making uh, kiss cut stickers or better known as like whole sticker sheets that don't cut all the way through the paper. This, so the Silhouette Portrait 3 can both fully cut through the paper and partially cut through the paper, creating a kiss, a kiss cut style sticker sheet. It'd be so much fun to do a follow-up video and show the process of doing that sticker style and just be able to 
design a whole theme sticker sheet that it just sounds like a really fun creative challenge and I really would love to do that. For now, I'll just be using it for die cut stickers for the next couple of months for my sticker members as well as prepping for my first update for the new year. Speaking of updates, this will pro probably be my final update of the year. I talked about it a little bit more in the last video, but I've learned so much about running an online shop for the first time this year and I'm really excited about these big upgrades to everything and because of all these upgrades and other business opportunities, I've had to cancel plans for a winter slash holiday launch which it honestly makes me a little sad but I'll probably get my winter sticker design fix with the December sticker of the month for my Kofi members anyways so it's not a big deal. I always want to prioritize quality and really make sure the products I'm offering are the best they can be and that I'm proud of them as well as I don't want to have to rush any Anything just because of the holidays and I just want to mention a bunch of the older sticker designs I made this year or if any of the designs on my shop now have sold out, sold out they will be offered again next year so don't worry about missing your opportunity also I am considering moving my shop to Squarespace for 2024 for better organization and shipping options Kofi is great for beginners and smaller order volumes but right now it really isn't built for the amount of order traffic I was getting for my September update and what I'm getting right now, it was, it's getting a little hard to manage and keep track of order fulfillment, as well as a lot of customers would end up making slight errors in their addresses and Kofi doesn't have a Google autofill for addresses and like auto correction, but Squarespace does. So I'm really hoping switching to Squarespace can really eliminate some of those correction errors and maybe speaking to Kofi since I'm still a Kofi ambassador and I think just having that slight change to order fulfillment could save so many orders and save so much time from doing customer service. I'm still staying on Kofi for my memberships. I have Kofi Gold and there's like a 0% platform fee on the site because of that. And they're always updating and rolling out new features to make the platform better. So I'm really looking forward to using, so I'm really looking forward to using both of the platforms together for my business. And I can also insert HTML of my Kofi to my website so they can integrate really well together. But yeah, I can't wait to be more organized and optimized to make shop management a little less stressful and reduce errors along the way and ultimately provide a better customer experience for you. It was great using Kofi to host my stickers for this final launch and Kofi has helped me immensely with giving me tools to start running an online shop and, and build another income source for my artwork. Before I close out the video, thank you guys so much for 40,000 subscribers. I think we gained over 10,000 subscribers the past month, which is insane. Uh, this is partially due to my like sketchbook tour and anatomy video getting a lot of reach and a lot of views. So I just want to th say thanks to everyone who comments, likes, and shares my videos. I've gotten a lot of great opportunities to work with companies like Squarespace to bring in a little extra income. And it's all because of viewers like you for growing my channel. And I'm super excited to close out my first year of posting videos. And I'm really looking forward to future projects and improving the channel quality and providing better content and artwork for you guys next year. So thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Reminder, if you wanna start building your online shop or portfolio, you can check out squarespace.com slash sketches of Shay to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using my code sketches of Shay. And the biggest thank you to my continuous supporters of the channel and my artwork, my Kofi members. If you want to support future content like this, early access to YouTube videos, exclusive stickers, and see more of my art, you can check out my membership tiers linked down below. We have a brand new sticker of the month for November, a cowboy Tamagotchi. I can't wait to send them out to you guys. So shout out to my sticker club members as of October 23rd. Asekias, Agul, Air, Alien Kid, Elisa R, Anne is Confused, Artist Life 03, August, Bean, Blue Swanson, Bren Dog, Brud Mud, Buckley, Kaylin D, Canid Courier, Charu, Cheyenne, Clowny Guts, Dara, Dasi, Demon Sketchnin, Ectoplasm, Lunatic, Emmy, Emily B, Emily C, Emma, Arasusta, Fermenting Dragon, Froggy Bells, Gabriella C, Ghost Pup, Grace, Heather C, 
Hen, Impicarus, Ink Palette, Izzy, Jason, Jazz, Jordan, Julie, Junos, Cam's Art World, Katie, Kent, Kia, KP, Crisp, Jeem, Seams, Creates, Laura C, Leslie, Liesel, Liz, Lucas S, Lux, Mads, Mar, Max Decided, Mayday V, Mayo, Mika Lika, Moth, Mr. Goat Was Here, Maya, Nat, Olive, Olivia, Pierce, Pilot, Pixie Boo, Purpy, Red, Reggie, Wren, Roses Are Purple, Rowan, Ruby T, Rin, Seiche, Salem, Salty Goober, Sam, Serensley, Scotty, Screaming Rat, Shay, Shelf Cat, Simon, Sir Knight, Star, That Gay Otaku Boy, Taito, Ugly Sketchbook, Vampy Ajax, With Sir, Expendu, Zatheka, and Zelly. And shout out to my sticker doodles as well. Big Chungus, Chipu, Cup of Honey, Deandria, Day on the Cow, Aaron, Catherine F, Lexan A, Lily Bell, Mango Dust, Nicole Nader Art, Peach, Peachy Pie Peeps, Rink Kenobi, Soft Lesbian, Star Gamer, Tammy, Tasty Battery Acid, Tephoric, Vixen, and Balancey. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I have a lot planned for November and December, a couple more draw with me, sketchbook tours, some printmaking content, and of course, another bacon draw to round out the year. So make sure to like and subscribe to see future videos. And yeah, go design some stickers, drink some water, stretch a bit, and I'll see you next week. Bye.